I'm Doreen Yu. I'm associate editor of the Philippine Star. I'm very happy in the place I'm in now as a Chinoy, as a Pinoy. Um, and I am, I've lived long enough that if anybody challenges what I am or um, tries to belittle what I am, I know enough to fight back and I know I will win because whatever prejudices they may have, I know I can counter. Um, whatever they, they decide to, to say about my being a Chinese, my being, you know, Chinoy, neither here nor there, uh, everything, all of that, I, I stand on solid ground and I, I can answer any one of them. Be sure and catch Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, presented by Chinoy TV. Hi, I'm Janina Chan. I'm a TV host. I'm a podcaster, a columnist, and a content creator. Okay, so for our family, it's kind of like a mix of both traditional and modern. But in terms of upbringing, in terms of how we were raised, me and my sister, by our parents, I think um, it is similar to most families here in the Philippines. You know, we're both um, very family-oriented. Um, I am a part of a very supportive family, so I'm also grateful that, especially my mom, she's always been supportive ever since I was um, a baby girl. <laughs> Literally started young. And I'm so grateful for um, my family's encouragement and support um, in what I do. Being part of the One Chinoy campaign is definitely such an honor and also a responsibility. <laughs> I am so happy to be here to be able to reflect as well on my identity and I feel more realigned to myself by doing so too. It's definitely been fun and I love knowing more about where I belong. I'm grateful for where I'm going onwards together as One Chinoy community. I'm inviting all of you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Hello, I am Nicole Cordovez and I was Miss Chinatown 2014 and Binibining Pilipinas Grand International 2016. I think the biggest misconception is that we are like we keep to ourselves. Uh, we don't really, we're not so emotional because growing up in a Chinese family, we don't really say, like we don't state our feelings, we don't show our emotions. We're not touchy at all, <laughs> and our parents don't even give us encouragement. Not that it's not entirely a bad thing, but more of they want us to stay humble. I'm really honored to be part of One Chinoy because I feel like we need to tell our story more. We need to open up a conversation more. And I know that and dami nating Chinoy community members na nagahanap ng kausap, nagahanap ng mahuhugutan ng advice. So we need to be more present. We need to be more visible. And I'm inviting you guys to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. I'm Patricia Ngo, and I'm a children's book writer here in the Philippines. Growing up, I didn't see a lot of representation of Chinois, and I think that's why I wasn't really that sure about what it meant to be Chinois. And 
Eventually, when I reached college, I learned about how culture isn't a pure and static thing. Cultures keep changing just as people do, and the Chinoy culture is just one way in which cultures kept changing. And I learned that there wasn't just one way of being Filipino. There were many ways to do so, and being Chinoy was a valid way of being Filipino. that this campaign is really important in helping bridge the gap between whatever miscommunications we might have with other cultures and other people. Uh, there are times when people misunderstand what it means to be Chinoy. They don't understand sometimes that the Philippines is still our home and that we are still Filipinos even with our different experiences. And I appreciate that this campaign helps bridge that gap and to clarify those misconceptions that people have. I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Hi, I'm Rob Jam. I'm an illustrator, comic book creator, um, art director, and friend. Well, I just wanted to make comics as a kid. I didn't know it could be a career. Um, I think even if you are from a Filipino family, if, they, if you tell them you want to be an artist, they're kind of afraid of it. Um, because, yeah, there is such a misconception of how you can make money in art. I know that the Filipino Chinese community or the Chinese community, it's so focused on what's sure to be a successful career path or a successful business or a successful whatever, and then art is such a thing outside of that. I feel very honored to be part of this because, um, yeah, I knew I was always a part of this community, but I've never really felt, like, recognition from it or that anyone in the Chinese Filipino community or Filipino Chinese community cared because, yeah, like, there's that whole expectation that they don't know much about art or they see art as just, well, waste of time, that kind of thing. And I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. My name is Stan C. I'm a radio DJ, a podcaster, a voice talent, an events host, and a writer. All things that you're not expected to be when you're Chinoy. I grew up in a traditional, stereotypical Chinese-Filipino household. So my dad is uh, pure Chinese born in the Philippines. And my mom is, uh, is literal na mestiza because my maternal grandmother uh, was Bisaya. She, uh, she came from Leyte. And the maternal grandfather, ko, who I never met, was an immigrant from China. So I really got it all in the sense that I'm Chinese-Filipino and I, I can't just be one without the other. I feel privileged to be part of the One Chinoy campaign because I want to be the voice that starts these uncomfortable conversations. And it's high time that they happen because we have to look at who we are to understand where we come from. And that's a conversation that's long overdue. It's time to shock the system. And I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Hi, my name is Tim Yap. I'm a host and eventologist. I'm proud to be Chinoy because I know I come from a bloodline of hard work. Uh, I come from a, a place where tough love was the norm, where we always had to work hard to get to where we are. Uh, it was always one step at a time. Nothing was given to us on a silver platter.
I love being part of this One Chinoy campaign because uh, it reminds us that we are one, right? That we are in a world that's becoming so tribal and, uh, you know, into each other's, only into each other's. Uh, we need uh, reminders that, hey, we are all one and the same. And I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Uh, I'm Wilson Lee Flores. I'm in the real estate business. Also, my hobby is writing a column in Philippine Star. I also own a bakery in Quezon City. I have Chinese and I have Filipino culture. That's 100% Filipino, 100% Chinese. So I'm 200% of, of a person. I'm 200% richer as a person. It's not like... Um, yeah, there's no need to balance. I have to continuously learn to be both. Every single culture that enriches us is important. We should always analyze ourselves in order to be better human beings. And our uh, ethnic Chinese minority in the Philippines, uh, non-stop changes. We are experiencing non-stop changes every generation. We should be better. We should always strive to be better. Uh, by uh, cherishing our heritage and our values, learning from our ancestors in order to be a benefit to the Philippines. I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. The modern Chinoy. Where are you from? I said, I'm from the Philippines. But how come you speak Chinese? So there's always that mm, ambiguity. Are you really Filipino or are you Chinese? I've been asking questions all my life like, am I Filipino enough or am I Chinese enough? And then my uncle looks at me, you do TV? Hello, you're too singkit. So, meaning ba pag singkit, hindi ka pwede mag-TV? At that time, it was at the height of the island dispute and uh, the Chinois have been at the middle of the crossfire between the Chinese and the Filipinos. So because of that, we decided to address this because um, at that time, a lot of people are confused in terms of the loyalty of the Chinois here. Where does your nationalism or your patriotism lie? Does it lie with where your ancestors come from? Or does it lie with where you were born and raised? So, our money legals always ask, na may great wall ba yung pamilya niyo? <laughs> Funnily enough, I have never really dated a lot of Chinese girls. They scare me. <laughs> I really would like to grow up like a normal child. I really would like to go to the mall, watch a movie. But had it not been for this training of my parents, I would not be where I am today. We should not lose out our Asian heritage. Yun ang fear ko, yun ang worry ko is uh, it's easy to lose out our Asianness by all these overwhelming Western cultural influences. I want to be the voice that starts these uncomfortable conversations and it's high time that they happen because we have to look at who we are to understand where we come from. No matter how it is run, this is our country. It is our lupang hinirang. We are just in one country, we are in one boat. Do not say why me, just say why not me.
Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Doña Maria Premium Quality Rice, our Filipino farmers' hard work and dedication in every grain. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. So when you hear those numbers, it's really overwhelming because when we started, we didn't actually expect to hit those figures. Those figures are something we haven't actually experienced from the past 10 years that we've been producing Chinoy TV. We, we actually started at the bottom. During the last four episodes of Chinoy TV that aired in our previous network, we actually garnered a zero rating. Being a production company and seeing that nobody actually watched the episode that we produced, it was really very frustrating. Um, instead of us taking it on a negative light, we decided to take it positively. We took it as a challenge that maybe it's a sign that we need to make some changes in terms of the show's concept. And that actually led us to this documentary. During the first meeting that I had with Mike, so we actually clicked right away in the, in the sense that he was able to grasp um, the vision that I had for this show. I, I actually told him that if this is going to be the last Chinoy TV season that we're coming out, I want it to actually be the best amongst the rest. And at the same time, um, we want to make this something that the community can actually be proud of. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. This is how most of us modern Chinois identify ourselves as. I'm Janina Chan, a proud Chinoy myself, and I'm so excited and honored to take you through the journey that led to the creation of this groundbreaking documentary series brought to us by Chinoy TV. We've been producing Chinoy TV since 2010. One of the reasons why we decided to switch from a lifestyle magazine show to a documentary because during that time, we're actually at the height of the misunderstanding between the China and Philippines brought by the coronavirus, by the West Philippine Sea issue. We felt that we need to make a stand and to actually address this issue by sharing to the public the truth. And we also wanted to give a different perspective of the Chinese Filipino community here in the Philippines. Hi, I'm Rain Smika and I'm a previous assistant writer for Shinoi TV. Being part of this documentary, it awakened my perspective like there are a lot of things that happened before that actually came to be. Our ancestors and my angkongs and amas, maybe they had to fight a lot for us to live comfortably to where we are now right now. Hi, I'm Pamela Anjaila Yap and I'm, I work as a production coordinator in Chinoy TV. At first, I didn't know what it was gonna talk about because the profilers were all from generation which are older than me. But then when I heard profilers talk and especially the older generations, you can see that they have adapted to the new ways, to the modern ways, which is a good thing. It was really helpful for my family and I think it will be very helpful to the Chinoy community. Since the pilot episode aired last August 8th, the response from our viewers has been quite overwhelming and even unexpected. Viewership steadily grew from 694,000 to 961,000 on CNN Philippines. And when you combine views from TV and social media, we were able to hit a total of 1.8 million views. Chinoy TV is actually very strong in terms of the senior Chinese market, but it's actually the first time that we're actually able to connect to the younger generations. After the release, we were able to get good feedbacks uh, from both the traditional Chinois, the modern Chinois, the, ch the senior Chinois, as well as the younger Chinoy market. I'm Michael Carandang. I'm the director of Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. 
When the ratings came in, I was ecstatic. We worked hard to make sure that the content that we are producing really speaks to the Chinoy community and it's something that's relevant to them. When the ratings came out the first week, I thought like, okay, yes, we were hitting the nerve. We were doing exactly what we we're supposed to be doing and the message was clear, which was to define a modern Chinoy. So one of the biggest challenges that we had to do this season is to be able to produce and shoot this during a pandemic. And, um, and in production, that's something that we really take seriously is safety. Uh, so number one, like, I mean, it added so many protocols on how we normally we shoot production. And especially with some of the profilers that we were inviting to be part of the show, it was really important for Chinoy TV to make sure that they, their safety is at the utmost importance. In this season of Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, we were more than fortunate to have such a colorful set of diverse Chinoy profilers and resource people who are more than willing to share their stories with us. Their story is our story. And as a Chinoy myself, I am so grateful and proud to be a part of this documentation of our rich legacy so that our future generation can appreciate it even more. One of the changes that we did this season was we didn't have a host. And in lieu of that, we brought in eight resource persons who served as storyteller. These eight resource persons provided different perspectives from the Chinoy community. We started off the series by taking a look back at our past. So what better way to kick things off than with the story of Teresita Angsi, the founder of Kaisa Para Sa Kaunlaran. This year, 2021, marks my 50th year working with an NGO. The credo of our organization, Kaisa Para Sa Kaunlaran, in essence says, our blood may be Chinese, but our roots grow deep in Philippine soil. Our bonds are with the Filipino people. It was giving me a lot of unique perspectives of how I have to embrace more about my Chinese-Filipino identity. She became, when at the height of this, this this horrible spur of kidnappings of Chinois, she became the lone brave voice. There are countless families, countless victims who will say they owe their life to Tessie. Towards 19, end of 1992, it was happening so frequently. So I was the first one probably to start recording everything that I hear because you don't see this in the papers. You don't see this being reported. You hear this only in the grapevine. We noticed that it's already happening on a weekly basis until 15-year-old Charlene C. was killed at EDSA in 1993, January. The very first time after it's a revolution that you see the Chinese Filipinos so united was during the mass funeral protest for Charlene Si. Teresita Ang Si, she's, she's actually one of the Chinois that I really look up to. Her story about Charlene C's death, I think those are very integral. It's an important happening within the Chinoy community that the younger generations should actually know. Through the series, we also got to learn more about the great value of giving back to the community, as exemplified in the story of Chinoy chemist Pinky Tobiano. I'm Pinky Pet Tobiano, a CEO, entrepreneur, chemist, and the founder of Pinky Cares Foundation. In 2004, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. That was enough heartbreak to break my life, my parents' life. After two months, I was diagnosed with cancer myself. So open the light. 
I was rushing to the airport because I have a Chinese supplier. I have to go to a business trip. I fell down the flight of stairs and I hit my head. Then I went to have my CT scan MRI. By accident, the scan went a little overboard my neck. So then they found out that I had a node. When they biopsy, I had cancer. So for Pinky Tobiana, was actually inspired by her sharing in terms of how she overcame cancer. A typical Chinoy is usually very particular with how people would perceive them. Kumbaga, there, there's a saying na saving face in the Chinoy community. For a Chinoy to actually open up something like this is shows bravery and courage. Like I always say, a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. So for me, my life itself is a miracle because of being so grateful. Most Chinois attest to the values of hard work and discipline as their solid foundation for success. President of SM Super Malls, Stephen Tan, shared just exactly how far one can go when service meets excellence. There's no such thing as odd jobs. There's only experiences. These experiences that I have has greatly contributed to what I am doing right now because service industry and what I'm currently doing is almost the same. My name is Steven Tan. I'm the president of SM Super Malls. I think being Chinoy, for me, with, with, with what I'm doing right now, no, has helped me so much. And good thing that you know, it, it added to my resume, the fact that you know, I speak fluent Mandarin, I read and write Mandarin. So that also aided me in understanding and doing business in China, which we are currently expanding a lot. Also, the values that my parents have instilled in me has also helped with all these things that I've learned, has helped me shape to what I'm doing today and what I will be doing in the next few years. Stephen Tan is an epitome of a Chinoy who rose from the ranks. He also emphasized a lot about the language of Hokkien and speaking Chinese fluently. Um, it's a shock to me because I don't speak Hokkien that much anymore. Uh, I think more of us needs to know how important it is, especially to us um, business people in Chinese, and how the language of Hokkien and Chinese is our way of communicating um, to other people and to our kind. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center. PG Flex Linoleum and Maruyama Tarpaulin. Evergreen Cereal. AgriPro, Premier Nutrition Incorporated. Global Diesel and GU Engineering. Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation. Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner. Japan Parts Bearing Corporation, now open in Caloocan. Pinturado Selyado Protectado Sigurado, AquaGuard Elastomeric Waterproofing Paint. Share your special moments with us at Hilton Manila. MTN Aesthetic Supplies Incorporated. Wonderful Trading. Federation of Filipino-Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry Philippine Xinjiang General Association, Incorporated, Grand Family Association of the Philippines, Incorporated, Federation of Filipino-Chinese Alumni Association, Incorporated, Alejandro Ko, Jimmy C, Nang Family, Enrique Chua, Li Pue Chin, Chua Beng Teng, Hong Wen Bing, Albert Ko, Stephen Sia, Rosalina Yasai, Thomas Kua, Unity, your testing specialist, Conchita Go, Jackie Ang. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. 
In this day and age, representation heavily matters. And here at Chinoy TV, we aspire to produce relevant content that will truly reflect our community beyond the usual stereotypes of being businessmen. So let's take a look back at some memorable stories from host and eventologist Tim Yap, filmmaker Roselle Monteverde, as well as chef Sharwin T. I'm Roselle Monteverde. I'm the CEO and Vice President of Regal Entertainment Inc. I would rather have a Chinoy write the story of a Manopo because it's going to be more authentic, not dictated, and the collaboration between what they really feel right now as a Chinoy would be better seen in the future Manopo. Since many Chinois are not given proper representation in media, in movie, in television, we actually want to be able to showcase Roselle's perspective at the same time Tim's experience being someone who's actually one of the most successful and one of the pioneers in the entertainment industry. When I told my mom, Mom, I want to be on TV. I want to do television work. My mom tells this to my uncle. Hey, you know what? My son, Tim, wants to do television. And then my uncle looks at me. You do TV? Hello, you're too singkit. Ah. So, meaning ba pag singkit, hindi ka pwede mag-TV? When somebody would tell me that it's impossible, I'd put a space between I am and possible and make it I am possible. I think the world has become so well-adjusted and that the Chinois have assimilated with the Pinoys, the Pinoys have assimilated. It's become one world. For Chef Charwin, uh, we felt that we need to be able to create a story that shows harmony. And food, in my opinion, is like the common denominator between the Chinese and the Filipino community. All of us love eating food. I love working with food. I love writing about food. I think about food when I'm eating food. You know what I mean? The reason why is that food is the great equalizer. Our family is not a super traditional Chinese family, but you know, most Chinese families have what I call the big five. So they want their kids to have any of these five professions, right? Businessman, lawyer, doctor, engineer, or architect. When I watched this cooking show called Walk With Yan, there was this Chinese guy cooking on TV. He held the attention of the entire studio audience. And that really opened my mind about cooking. Like, this might be something that I wanted to do. When I was younger, being a chef was a blue-collar job. There was no clear career path. I think that was the image of the culinary career that they had when I first broached the idea of working as a chef. But I think now it's changed. Now you can see a lot of Chinois are into the food business. They realize that you know creating restaurants is actually a really great career path for those that are very passionate about food. It's very inspiring because he didn't forget his culture and he did his best to mix the Chinese and the Filipino culture through his dishes and you know actually promoting it in other countries. It's very nice to see him not forgetting his Chinoy roots. The digital age also sparked the entrepreneurial spirit of Chinois, and among them is CEO of Great Deals e-commerce, Steve C. His innovation and foresight brought about a new blueprint when it comes to doing business in the e-commerce space. My entrepreneurial blood has always been there. As early as grade two, I remember I'm selling stickers. So I go outside of our school, buy a five peso sticker pad, and then cut it out and sell it one peso 50 cents, and I'll earn around three pesos. So the business acumen was there for me. Definitely, I've never been employed. I think my first employment when I became CEO of Great Deals. Great Deals started as a startup. We started small, you know, keep on growing our cash flow until we grow it big. I think those are the lessons that I've learned as a typical Chinoy in terms of learning how to to do the cash flow of your business so that you'll be able to grow it. <laughs> I always remember this you know, scenario. When the first time I was able to raise $12 million, I went home and then I, I told my dad, he said, Anak, yes, dad, sabi, congratulations, and he shook my hand. What does great deals really do? So to make it simple, you know, we're an e-distributor and an online retailer rolled into one. It's considered the, the road less traveled in the Chinoy community. He was able to actually show the other side 
of business that there's other opportunities more than the traditional merchandising that we Chinois are very used to. I think the modern Chinois are digital savvy, you know, Chinois that are willing to take bigger risks, not just, you know, being part of the family business, but being innovative, looking at startup, at tech, to be able to, to pursue a digitalized economy. I think that's the modern Chinoy for me. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Evergreen Cereal AgriPro, Premier Nutrition Incorporated Global Diesel and GU Engineering Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner Pinturado Seliado Protectado Sigurado, AquaGuard Elastomeric Waterproofing Paint Share your special moments with us at Hilton Manila Miss Chinatown Foundation Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry Philippine Xinjiang General Association Incorporated Philippine Long Tong Hai Fraternity Incorporated and Philippine Long Tong Hai Chamber of Commerce Incorporated President Raymond Uy Philippine Xinjiang Longhu Association and Philippine Xinjiang Longhu Chamber of Commerce Incorporated Philippine Chinese Commerce and Industry Overseas Association, Incorporated. Philippine Xinlian Association. Overseas Chinese Alumni Association of the Philippines. Alejandro Ko. Jimmy C. Nang Family. Chua Beng Teng. Hong Wen Bing. Albert Ko. Steven Sia, Rosalina Yasai, Jaime Lim, Victor Chua. Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. As the first season of Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart draws to a close, a couple of topics that aren't usually discussed in the community was brought into light. For the Love is Universal episode, it's actually the first time of Chinoy TV to come up or feature a content featuring these sensitive topics. The Great Wall, at the same time featuring topics on same-sex same marriage. When I proposed uh, to my now uh, husband, I called her uh, the, the night uh, before I was about to fly out. And I told her, Ma, before you find out from the whole world, I want to let you know that I proposed. Ah, I said, I proposed to Javi. And he goes, she goes, oh, who's Javi? I go, Ma, he's the guy that I would uh, have lunch and dinner with at home. She goes, oh, but he's a guy. I go, oh, okay, so okay, mahabang kwentuhan to. I go, Ma, <laughs> I said, Mom, Okay, ma, I'm boarding. Bye. She got shocked because uh, she saw it on CNN. It was in, in the news at the time. So uh, even when we got married, I told her that, hey, you'll be there and you'll walk us down the aisle. And she goes, ah, oh, wait, is, it, is this too much? Is this too much for me? But then she told me that whatever makes you happy is what I will want for you. And you want the people that you love to be their happiest selves, right? So part of that is accepting them for who they are, warts and all. Accepting them for mistakes, uh, accepting them for imperfections. That's part of it. When you embrace, you embrace the wholeness of the person. And since we're promoting uh, modern thinking, we decided to, to actually go through these sensitive topics but at the same time, create a treatment that allows us to share different perspectives so that it creates better understanding amongst the audience and the Chinoy community. I think the parenting episode is one of the episodes that's dearest to me because I feel that I was actually able to relate to the sharings of Francis Kong, me as a starting parent. If there's very important advice I'd like to give modern parents and modern Chinoy parents is this. Understanding that the times have changed two important things. Have 
fun, enjoyed the company, built relationship without compromise on the values. And secondly, life is very short. Parents like us, we realize our kids are growing up fast and we're growing older faster. And so having them increasing the relationship now is worth a lot more than anything that you can assign a price tag on. When he talked about how he changed his parenting style from his parents, I can also agree as a younger generation that maybe parents really need to learn to adapt, to change, and to understand their children more. So for me, this documentary um, means a lot to me because when we did this at the beginning, one of the mission really is to be able to create contents that can span through generations. And for me, as a, as a starting dad, I, I want to be able to leave something that my kids would actually be proud of. As part of the learnings to me as a producer, I, I think we're used to doing contents only for entertainment. But now, doing this documentary, we're able to actually experiment a model that allows us to marry entertainment, business, while creating social value to the community. I think this process has allowed me to see that, that, you know, I may not have Chinese blood, but, you know, Chinois and I are very similar in many ways. Going through this experience made me realize how similar we are and how we all have the same ambitions, but we all have the same drive. We all share the same values. But I think what, if we just give each other a chance to open up and, and see things the way they see it, we realize that we're actually more similar than different. What made this um, season different was we started focusing on the mission. We started thinking about the relevance of the content, the mission of the show, the documentary. As long as everything is in the right perspective, as long as you focus on the right thoughts, right target, right objectives, then all of these numbers would just follow. Here at Chinoy TV, we hope the series gave you an in-depth look at the Chinoy culture and experience. This is just the beginning of rediscovering what it truly means to be a modern Chinoy. We'll see you again next time for another episode of Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Presenting the Chinoy TV Podcast, your one-stop source to everything Chinoy. On this podcast, we will dig deep and understand the Chinese Filipino culture. We'll put a face to the deep-rooted meaning of being a Chinoy, defined by their struggles, shared history, and successes. Launching this October 17, 2021. Follow Chinoy TV Podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast fix. This is the Chinoy TV Podcast. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy was brought to you by Doña Maria Premium Quality Rice, our Filipino farmers' hard work and dedication in every grain. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Chinoy TV would like to thank. When the pandemic hit, it was a very scary time, especially for us doctors, because we were really there in the hospitals, and then we suddenly had to take on new roles. It's hard when you're calling conflicts with your calling at home. Not just for me, but many other colleagues, when they had to choose between family and work. I think it's time for us to realize the most important things in our lives.